Today in the news, we got AMD reviving a platform, RDNA 2 on a smartphone, and some juicy features for the Radeon software. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Now, this is something that I've been waiting for for a long time. So, on the desktop market, we've had four generations of Zen CPUs. Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, and Zen 3. I guess Zen 3D is also one right now, so let's call it five. During these generations, we had three generations of motherboard chipsets, the 300, 400, and 500 series. If you've been with AMD from the start, like me, you might still have a 300 series board. And something that I've always wondered was why in the hell can't we put a 5000 series processor or even a 3000 series processor in a 300 series board? And every time that I brought that up, I would get comments saying that I was dumb because Zen 2 and Zen 3 based CPUs were fundamentally different and putting 16 cores on a platform that supports a maximum of eight is nonsensical. This was further supported by AMD themselves. They locked the 300 series out of anything past Zen Plus, but that didn't stop some manufacturers to still release beta BIOSes. That was until AMD told them to shut the operations down. Well, turns out it wasn't that dumb. AMD just released an official AGISA version, which allows Ryzen 3000 and 5000 CPUs to be used on X370 boards. And the first manufacturer to release a BIOS update is of course ASRock. So if you kept your X370 board, you now got yourself a pretty good upgrade path from a 1800X all the way up to a 5950X. Pretty cool. Only thing is it will remove Bristol Ridge support. So that's because of the size of the new BIOS, it wouldn't fit, which is totally fine. Bristol Ridge is pretty much desolate now. Then we have Samsung and AMD together in the news. On December 30th, Samsung tweeted out that they would unveil their new Exynos chip with RDNA 2 graphics on January 11th. We are obviously past that date and nothing has come out. That's because a day later, they moved that unveil to February 8th, AKA their Samsung Unpacked event. A statement of the company reads, we are planning to unveil the new application processor at the time of launching a new Samsung smartphone. There are no problems with the AP's production or performance. Well, that's what Samsung says. Yet we got notorious smartphone leaker Ice Universe saying something a little different. Apparently, the chip with RDNA 2 graphics was tested at 1.9 gigahertz. It was too hot. They then tested it down at 1.69. Nice. Still too hot. Then 1.49. Still hot. And it became manageable at 1.29 gigahertz. Apparently, they are still trying to reach 1.9 0.49 gigahertz without it becoming too hot, but 1.29 is the current speed. In case you're wondering, the SOC would have six RDNA 2 compute units, which is just two less than that of the Steam Deck, but at 1.3 gigahertz, it would still be far slower than the 1.6 on the Steam Deck. Also, with AMD, the company recently released a video that highlights some of the new features we'll see in future Radeon software updates. And I gotta say, there's some pretty cool stuff here. The first one is AMD Link. So far, AMD Link is an app designed to enable users to stream games to mobile devices and TVs. It can monitor your performance and PC system info from a distance. And you can also stream and share some gameplay moments from a PC to a smartphone, a tablet, or another Windows PC. What it looks like AMD is going to do with Link 5.0 is far more impressive. Now, this is speculation based on what we see here, but it looks like GPU sharing might be an actual thing. And I know Linus made a whole video about GPU sharing using Parsec VMs and other stuff, but using Radeon software would be far easier. The next thing is Privacy View. As the name says, it's a privacy feature that basically tracks your eyes and darkens the screen in areas that you're not looking at. What's cool is these little option at the bottom right. Presence detection probably means that the feature will only turn on when it finds someone over your shoulder. It's pretty cool. Eye control for window switching and gaze pointer for the screen share are other options, but I'm not quite sure how they would work. If you had an AMD GPU, would you use any of these features? I'd for sure share my uh, GPU power. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one.
Thank you.